Muy buenos días a todas las personas que se conectan a esta sesión informativa de Colfuturo. Hoy nos acompaña King's College London, que es una universidad con la que tenemos un convenio. Me presento, mi nombre es Lady Velázquez, asistente del programa de Consejería Académica y de Relaciones Internacionales, y los acompañaré en esta sesión junto con Peter, quien es el representante de esta universidad, y nos contará sobre la oferta académica, requisitos de admisión, opciones de financiación y demás información relevante para iniciar sus estudios de posgrado en el exterior. Les recuerdo que, como ya mencionaba, tenemos un convenio que comprende un descuento del 20% sobre el valor de la matrícula para todos los beneficiarios de Colfuturo admitidos en programas de maestría y doctorado. Asimismo, se otorgará una beca del 100% del valor de la matrícula para un integrante del programa Semillero de Talentos que esté admitido incondicionalmente a un programa de maestría de 12 meses. Si ustedes están interesados en acceder a este beneficio que tenemos con esta universidad, deben postularse al programa Crédito Beca de Col Futuro, el cual tiene una convocatoria abierta y que cerrará el 28 de febrero. Y si están interesados en conocer más sobre este programa, los invito a que asistan a nuestra charla informativa este viernes a las 8 de la mañana. So, with no more introduction, thank you so much, Peter, for being here, and you can start with your presentation. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, um, here we go, and uh, I just need to start the slideshow from the beginning, uh, and there we go. So this is me down here. Um, uh, I'm a professor in the history department. That's my that's my main job. Um, I'm a medieval historian, uh, but I also uh, am vice dean for the Center of Doctoral Studies, uh, which takes an overview um, of research and looks after research students uh, in King's College London. My, uh, my colleague, who's the dean, Professor Rebecca Oakey, is uh, a medical professor, so we cover both sides of the university, and I'll tell you a bit more about that in a minute. And then Nigel Eady, you will see on the video a bit later. Uh, Nigel's really our boss. I mean, officially we're in charge, but uh, he's the real boss. Uh, he's the real continuity. Uh, and he looks after graduate students with tremendous uh, intelligence and with tremendous care. Um, uh, I could not ask for a better colleague. So we're very happy to have this uh, partnership with Col Futuro and Columbia. Um, this is obviously London, a uh, nice picture of uh, Westminster Bridge and the Houses of Parliament. Uh, but actually, King's is right there. Uh, I'm speaking to you. I can just about see the Houses of Parliament out of the window of my office. And we would be extremely happy under the terms of the agreement to welcome you to King's. And what I'm doing today is telling you a little bit about King's uh, and about our student body. Um, we have, uh, as this, the top left-hand slide tells you, a very big postgraduate body. There are over uh, 12 and a half thousand um, master's students in the university and over two and a half thousand doctoral students. Uh, We're at the heart of London and particularly our postgraduate body, although it's partly true of our undergraduate student body as well, is incredibly cosmopolitan. Um, London is a very cosmopolitan city and our postgraduate student body is very cosmopolitan as well. Uh, it isn't uh, any exaggeration to say that 105, 185 countries are represented on campus. Um, if anything, that sounds like uh, an underestimate to me. And we're, we have over 11,000 international students. Um, I would have thought at least half of those are master's and doctoral students. Uh, it's a very, once we get into non-undergraduate -undergra education, then it's an incredibly metropolitan um, uh, university. Uh, it's spread over five campuses in uh, London, um, but they're all in the heart of London. So you can see there's the Houses of Parliament down here. Um, uh, I'm actually speaking to you from about where it says two, uh, actually, sorry, four, uh, where 
arts and humanities are there, um, but the other parts of the campus are spread around this central bend of the river um, between the old city of London um, and Westminster. And we have a lot to offer all students um, at master's and at postgraduate level. Um, it's uh, a university that's been here for some time. Uh, we do have uh, a world leading reputation in education, research and service. We emphasize all of those things. Uh, we're interested in producing students who will contribute to the world um, and in making things better on all kinds of dimensions, um, whether technical, uh, whether political and, and, and aspirational, um, in legal affairs, in uh, climate, in looking after climate problems. Um, we're interested in all of that. We see our students as uh, an essential resource for the future of the planet. Um, and that has always been the vision that uh, I teach with. Uh, we're looking to make more effective uh, citizens of the planet because we need them. That's exactly where we are. So just to tell you a little bit of the specifics about King's, King's has been here since 1829. Uh, it's a, a long history in teaching arts and sciences, um, as well as medical matters. And King's is a huge medical school as well. The top universities um, in the UK are the so-called Russell Group. Um, and King's is a well-established member of the Russell Group, one of the top 10 universities in the UK, and we have alumni, as it says, all around the globe. Um, our teaching and research base uh, is across every discipline. Um, it, it, King's is a huge medical school. A lot of hospitals have been added um, to King's over the uh, decades. Um, it's the biggest teaching hospital in Europe, for instance. But at the same time, we also have very well established uh, traditions of teaching and research in social sciences, humanities, and hard sciences as well. Um, international collaboration is at the heart of what we do. Uh, and King's, for instance, uh, it's no small matter, played a major role in a lot of the uh, testing uh, that was involved in the research uh, that was part of the response to the COVID crisis. This is very much the kind of mission statement. Um, it's what you'd expect us to say, I suppose, but it is actually what we're all signed up to as well. Uh, research is at the heart of what we do and research actually informs our teaching as well. So uh, if you're interested in doctoral work, you'll find some very leading edge research being conducted in just about every discipline that you might remotely be interested in. Uh, but you would also find if you came as a master's student that that research is at the center of the teaching that's done at master's levels as well. And uh, when it comes to master's students, well, we're looking to equip them uh, to be researchers if they want to be, or to go out into the world equipped with uh, the critical skills and with the technical knowledge that will make them uh, powerful contributors to whatever career they choose to uh, follow. Uh, in support of that, uh, we have uh, staff who are leading researchers and thoroughly dedicated teachers uh, in every uh, discipline. Um, and I would stress, uh, because King's is such a uh, such an important medical school, uh, that the facilities, the libraries, and indeed the teaching is just as powerful in other areas too arts and humanities, to which I belong as a historian, of course, and social sciences as well. These are very big and powerful schools in their own right. If you're interested in applying, then you just go to the King's website um, and you'll find that there are 
if you type in here, postgraduate taught courses, you'll be led to this page. And obviously there are links here that would then take you through the process uh, that's involved. Uh, similarly, if you're interested in PhDs, uh, and of course, as the Center for Doctoral Studies, my concern is to look after particularly PhD students, but I do teach master students as a, as a professor of history as well. The, the uh, doctoral students are the particular concern of the Center for Doctoral Studies, of which I'm vice dean. Um, and uh, with luck, uh, we've got a little promotional video, uh, which will save you having just to listen to my voice all the time. There have been a few technical problems with the sound, but uh, I'm sure a uh, lady will let me know if it's not playing properly, but hopefully you can hear this as well as see it. Our training is really about developing the core behaviors, attributes and skills that young researchers need whether that's staying in research in the long term or whether that's going off and doing something completely different. So the MRC DTP is one of the main doctoral training partnerships offered by the Centre for Doctoral Studies at King's here. So as part of a PhD student you have to undertake a certain amount of CPD and show that you're still doing training rather than just researching. Kind of build our skill set outside of what we do in the lab. That's actually how I came in contact with the Centre for Doctoral Studies. Alongside that, you get all the other opportunities offered by the Centre for Doctoral Studies as well. In the MRC DDP, you have more of the scientific background of statistic courses, um, training for a particular experimental technique. But alongside that, in the Centre for Doctoral Studies, you have opportunities such as well-being, which I've done myself, also IT skills, when trying to reference different things in your reports, as well as how to use Microsoft or PowerPoint, or even to create a presentation. Being told how to present, so not just to a scientific audience, but also a non-scientific audience, I think that was really helpful for me. I had the opportunity to take several classes around discourse analysis in particular, and also some political economy and kind of methods for dealing with data sets. Uh, which have really helped me as I'm finishing up the PhD and figuring out what to do with all of this information that I now have and how to form it into conclusions and push it into publication. So as the video was uh, trying to emphasize, we're um, at the Center for Doctoral Studies, we are just as interested in the total training for PhD students, um, not just in um, the, uh, the actual PhD, but everything else that you need uh, in order to uh, progress your work. Um, uh, and uh, whoops, hang on, it started again, hang on. There we go, that's uh, what I was after. Uh, this slide. Uh, that doing a doctorate is not just about writing the actual doctorate, it is also about developing the different skills that you need for the rest of your career. That is our prime uh, job at the Center for Doctoral Studies, is the uh, overall offer that we make to PhD students. I realize that a lot of you uh, will be interested in King's potentially as a place to do a master's, but I would just emphasize as this is my a particular administrative remit for the Center of Doctoral Studies that we take extremely good care of our uh, PhD students uh, and think of the full PhD experience, everything else that's involved as well, preparing people for the world beyond the PhD, not just uh, looking to get the PhD done. So uh, there are all these kinds of training available uh, as well as the necessary care to make sure that people uh, prosper um, in the careers that they're going to choose. Um, and for whether you're interested in masters or doctoral training, then uh, the process is pretty much the same in terms of uh, starting to uh, think about making an application to King's. Uh, obviously you need to identify the particular uh, area that you're interested, uh, hard sciences, health, um, 
social sciences, management, finance, and law, arts, humanities. Um, uh, then within each area, there are particular um, departments. Um, so you make your way down to the faculties and departments lists from the, the general area. So if you're interested in history, then history is obviously a department of arts and humanities. You click on the link for arts and humanities, follow it down, uh, find the history department. Um, at the department levels, you then see the uh, particular interests of uh, particular um, researchers. Um, uh, and uh, through those uh, interests, you find a supervisor if you're interested in doctoral research, or you find the person who is administratively responsible for the master's course that you might be interested in. So um, in both cases, you go to the uh, faculties and uh, departmental lists, uh, see who's responsible for uh, either the area that interests you, if you're interested in PhD research, or the uh, master's, particular master's degree, or two or three master's degrees that you might be interested in, and you make uh, you identify the right person, uh, and then you make contact with them. Um, if you're, if it's uh, PhD research, then obviously you need to be thinking very specifically uh, about individual researchers. And you can look on the research portal uh, to find who's doing what and how that might coincide with your work. Um, if it's uh, masters, uh, then you're just interested in the person with responsibility for your particular master's course. But either way, the process is then uh, very uh, similar. Um, you get in touch by email. You shouldn't be shy about getting in touch by email. We all welcome approaches by students, both master's students and doctoral students. We're very happy to do that it's a central part of our job. We want to see you come. We're happy to encourage it. So write us an email. Don't be shy. Uh, tell us what your interests are, why you think the fit is good between you and the master's course or you and the potential doctoral supervisor. Um, tell us about yourself, where you're coming from. Uh, tell us about funding and how it's all going to work. Tell us about your academic achievements uh, so that we know all about you. Give us a CV, um, explain your interests, and then ask to set up um, an online meeting. Uh, in the old days, it used to be telephones, but of course, that's uh, ancient history now. Uh, Teams or Zoom meeting is how we do these things. Uh, and again, don't be shy to write that email to get the meeting set up. We'll be very happy. Uh, whether you're a potential PhD student or a master's student to tell you much more about kings in that particular area and uh, to uh, make sure that we get you on the right course or attached to the right supervisor, because that's the, the key job, uh, is making sure the fit is excellent between the student uh, and the course or the student and the supervisor. That's what makes... Uh, academic work really work is that that fit has to be excellent. So what kinds of things to include in a personal statement, which is uh, you might want to uh, put that in probably just in an outline when you make the initial approach to the course supervisor or potential uh, supervisor, <coughs> if you're a PhD student. Um, but you'll need to write a more detailed personal statement as part of the um, uh, entry process, either for master's or PhD work. So these kinds of things you need to tell us about your academic achievements. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. I just need to cough a minute. Academic publications, if any, that will obviously be much more relevant if you're uh, a PhD student what work you've done so far uh, and any related placements and projects you've undertaken, just showing us uh, how extensive your interest is in the topic, um, what you already know, explain 
what topic you're interested in. Show us anything that tells us that you've got an inquiring mind and you've got the academic curiosity uh, that's required to succeed at master's level or research level. And also anything that gives us a sense of you as a committed person um, who can push themselves hard to get the best out of the opportunities that are presented. I have to say that the further you go up in the academic world, the less it's about <coughs> uh, pure and simple ability. It's also about staying power and determination, uh, the capacity to uh, apply yourself uh, to get the most out of it. Because, you know, uh, it's not just intellectually hard, uh, then it's very demanding in other ways as well, which is why we offer all these other kind of supporting courses in the Center for Doctoral Studies. Um, this gives you the um, contact information for the Center of Doc for Doctoral Studies. That's obviously applies uh, particularly to those of you who are interested in uh, doctoral research. Um, but you'll just navigate the King's College website to the particular departments that are hosting uh, the master's courses that you're interested in uh, and the full listing of those master's courses uh, if you're a master's student rather than uh, a doctoral student. Um, and I will stop the presentation there. Uh, I hope that was uh, useful as a kind of outline. I think the fundamental thing that I would stress uh, is that uh, King's College is this uh, extraordinary uh, cosmopolitan international community right at the breathing heart of London. And London is a wonderful place to be a student. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for this presentation. I guess that all the information is really useful for all of us. So, well, we are going to go ahead with the questions. So I have okay. two here. The first one is from Sarah. He's asking, which are the requirements for the full-time MBA program? Um, you need to have uh, completed uh, uh, an undergraduate program, usually in a relevant discipline. So uh, economics, politics, whatever, um, and achieve the equivalent of a uh, good to one degree. Um, we have an international student office which handles all those kinds of things, which checks out the kind of uh, qualifications that you will get from your university in Colombia and compares them to uh, what we expect. Um, you also have to pass uh, in formal English language uh, exams to uh, specific standards if you've not already done a degree that's taught in English. That's the, the exception is that. Uh, but I'm imagining that you won't have done that, in which case you also need to pass the specific language exams. And again, the International Students Office will give you the details on which exams are acceptable and what standards you have to get in them. Thank you. Then we're going to go with Guillermo. He's asking, well, it's in a specific situation. Maybe I guess that it would be better if you can contact the person in charge of that, but I'm going to read it to Peter. Maybe he can help you with that. So it says, I have an unconditional offer to study strategic entrepreneurship and innovation. I am required to pay a fee to ensure the place, but I'm still waiting for the application to go Futuro. I would like to know if you could help me by extending the deadline of my unconditional offer until I get a response from Call Futuro. Uh, yes, uh, your... Uh... Initial thought, lady, is absolutely spot on. I, I do not have jurisdiction yeah. over that. But I would uh, contact the department and explain the situation. Don't be shy about doing that. They'll be sympathetic. Um, and I imagine uh, if they've made you an unconditional offer that they would be able to hold it for some time to allow your call futuro um, application to work through. OK, good. Thank you. We're going to go with uh, Juan Camilo. He's asking. Generally speaking, how long is a PhD program at King's? The, uh, the normal length is uh, three years research with potentially a writing up year beyond. Um, it, it depends what area you're in. Um, in arts, humanities, social sciences, it's usually between three and four years. Um, in some scientific areas, it can be closer to three 
rather than the three to four. But the normal idea, the the normal line that we're working with is three years. That's the the baseline that we're expecting. Yes. Uh, um, I would say that we the fees are for three years. There's then, if you move into the writing up phase, uh, there's a, a much smaller, almost non-existent fee that's charged in the fourth year. So it's three years of fee that is generally having to be paid by PhD students. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to go with Lauren. He's asking, uh, excuse me, she's asking, there is a requirement in terms of professional experience? Um, that would depend on what course she wants to apply for. Does she say what she's interested in? No, no, she's not saying that. Maybe in general terms, you can say if there is necessary the professional experience. Um, well, I'm thinking there would be in tech, there might be in some technical areas. Um, you know, we have a school of dentistry or whatever um, that I imagine requires um, some specific technical expertise. Uh, but we're normally expecting to provide the the training that students need um, and even I think what can help of course is in um, master's degrees that are uh, really preparing you for a career rather than for further academic work and, and many of them do that then showing uh, that you have an interest in that area by having uh, I don't know, followed up some interns or unpaid placements with relevant organizations or just a bit of work experience shadowing someone um, who's doing that kind of work, that can be very helpful uh, to uh, emphasize your commitment, um, which is obviously that feeds into the decision making process, it's ability and commitment uh, that we're interested in together. So. Okay. But I, 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 there wouldn't be many that there would be a formal requirement, I think. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, Daniel is asking, can you tell us about the English requirement or the language requirement? Um, it's, I, um, I haven't been in charge of a course for a little while. I haven't been the admitting tutor, but I think it's, uh, usually they use IELTS the international English, um, and uh, you are, I think it's level fives are required, if I'm remembering right. But please don't quote me on that. If you go to the website and, and double check that to be sure, but uh, my memory is that it's level fives right across the board. I mean, comprehension, writing, reading, um, that's, that I think is the, the level that is usually required. Um, I think if it's mathematics, they're a little more lenient, but in anything that's involving uh, quite complicated uh, linguistic skills, then I, I think I'm right in saying okay. that. Good, thank you. And then we have a really important question that is, what is the cost of living in the UK? In your experience, what would you say? What would be your advice for the students? Um, I think this is where London is actually terrific. Um, Accommodation is a little bit expensive in London, uh, but um, the there are so many things to do and so many cheap ways to uh, have exciting cultural experiences and eat and all the rest of it. Uh, it's it's a city that is uh, kind of built around and for students. Actually, it's a, it's a wonderful place to be a student. I, accommodation is not cheap. And students uh, are well advised to, to double check that so that they know exactly what they're letting themselves in for. But actually, London is uh, a what then, aside from the accommodation cost, London is a wonderful place to be a student. And uh, uh, all my students have a fantastic time without spending huge amounts of money. Good. <laughs> and the last question I got from social media is what makes a strong candidate for these kind of programs? We're always uh, interested in uh, students who've demonstrated that they are uh, very committed. Uh, we want people who are keen. Um, we want people who are very able. 
I mean, that it, it is that combination. Uh, you'd find that from any elite university, it's that combination of not only uh, natural intellectual ability and aptitude for the particular subject, but also showing that you're really keen in it. Because, uh, you know, we do get applicants from right across the planet. Um, we get more good applicants in many places than we can take. And so we're having to make decisions, uh, not just on the basis of academic ability, but also on uh, what students have demonstrated about themselves and uh, interest in the areas that they're concerned with, that, uh, because that's what we have to go on. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you so much for this answer. So I have the last question that is uh -huh. from Daniel. He's asking, am I allowed to work while I'm studying? Yes, you are. There's a specific number of hours. Uh, I think it's 20 hours a week currently. Uh, but that's actually being uh, that's actually under review at the moment. I okay. saw an article in the newspaper, uh, so uh, maybe not the greatest authority. Daniel, don't again, don't quote me on it. But that limit was uh, there was a suggestion that that was going to be moved up to thirty hours, uh, but at the moment it's twenty. Okay, good. So maybe. Just uh, to finish the presentation, can you show us the contact information, your email, or maybe there is a phone number they can contact in case they have more questions? Uh, yes. Um, I think probably the best thing to do is that I will send you my email and contact details, Lady, if that's okay. And then yeah. you can send it to the yeah, meeting in general. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Let, let, let's do it that way. That'd be great. Okay. Yeah. So thank you, Martin. Uh, Martin, I'm sorry. Thank you, Peter. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I was confused. <laughs> Thank you, Peter, again. That concludes our questions and our presentation. So we really appreciate you taking the time being here. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you very much, everyone. And please do, when you get my email details, if you want to write any follow-up, I'd be very happy to field them for you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great yeah. day. Mm -hmm.